All right, guys, so I just decided I was gonna do a little video uh, about my Husky tool bag and all my electrician tools, my electrical tools. Uh, I don't wanna take too much uh, time here, but I'll try and go through uh, everything I've got here without taking up too much time and uh, leaving a couple of small comments or small uh, short review on everything I've got in this bag. So uh, we'll just start over here on this side, on the front. Um, I've got my Milwaukee Fastback, just regular bladed knife. Um, really nice knife. I actually uh, got this thing, Jesus, got it like 10 years ago, way before I started electrical and um, kind of just was like, oh shit, this is perfect. Kind of threw it in there. Uh, no complaints with that. <coughs> um, this is a newer Fastback knife. I got this one a couple months ago. Um, it's got some Lenox gold razor blades in there. This one's almost about due to get changed out. Uh, it's starting to get a little, a little fucked up, but um, love this thing. And the only complaint is that the spring is a little soft compared to their other springs. Um, and uh, it's uh, like their tape measure has like the same type of spring mechanism, but it's just way more stiff in there. And I also find myself getting my little tack driver tightening this tank thing up pretty often, honestly. Um, it's a good knife overall. Um, oh yeah, one last thing too is if I'm cutting uh, Carflex, um, which is like a, a tubing or you know, a type of like almost like pipe that you can run wires through, um, if it's really cold outside, I don't know if you guys know, but Carflex, it gets really, really stiff. Um, and when I'm cutting into that or um, something else really hard too, the blade wants to pop out. So another complaint I got about it, um, but what I use it for most of the time, it's great. It does a good job. Um, might find myself one of the um, push out the front knives though, like a Lenox one or something. Um, then I got a couple other Gerber knives up here. The other one's the exact same thing, except for it's just all gold. Um, these are two great Gerber knives. I've had these things for years. Um, great knives, in case you need them. They're right there. I got two tick testers here. Uh, I got a Klein one right here, non-contact voltage tester. Um, a lot of controversy over these things. I'm not even going to get into it. Um, I love them, though. I like the Klein one. This one's just some like fluke off brand. Uh, and I got 1110 punch down tool. Kind of took it out from inside the bag to make room for some other shit and didn't really know what to put it. So I just threw it on the outside. Um, and I guess we'll uh, spin this bag around. I'll kind of show you the other side first. On this side, uh, we'll start over here. I uh, just recently got these for free. Um, kinda just came across them and not really sure where to put them inside the bag. These are just uh, Milwaukee uh, vice grips. Um, these things are great. Um, it was all rested up. I couldn't even rotate this when I first got it, but um, haven't had to use these at work yet. The teeth on these are just extremely nice and big. I can definitely see these uh, locking down on something really good. So for the meantime, I just kind of threw them over there on the side. Um, another tool I've literally never used at work, but it's one of those things in case you do need them. You know, it's nice to have. Um, these are some Midwest, you know, metal shears. Nothing crazy there. This is actually pretty nice. Um, good little investment. This is a Milwaukee bit set. Comes with like Torx, Flatheads, Phillips, all different sizes, um, and a little bit right here. And these silver bits are like uh, um, just a hardened bit. And man, I tell you, I used to go through Phillips, like normal black impact rated bits from all different companies, from DeWalt to Milwaukee to Bosch. And I'd go through a Phillips bit like once a week, like a little tip. 
And once I got these silver ones, man, I've had the same one for two and a half months and I'm still rocking it. So those things are awesome. I highly recommend. But this thing's nice in case I don't know what bits I'm gonna need. I can throw that in my pocket. I don't have to carry the whole thing. Um, this kind of got banished from that pocket. This is an old Romex stripper from Klein. Uh, it doesn't really strip very well. I've got a hole blown in it. Um, handles are all chewed up, so I put electrical tape over it. Can't really get myself to get rid of it, so I just kind of have it had over here, and then it got banished over here with my spade um, little uh, bits here. So just got a whole bunch of those laying around in here. I've got um, DeWalt ones, and I've got uh, just a bunch of random shit, speed bore bits. Um, that's coming handy for sure. And I've got my electrical card here. Um, I've got some electrical tape right now here using blue, red, white, and black. So I got a bunch of that. One small roll of the good scotch tape, and the rest is just M3. Um, and then let's see. And I've got this Klein Tools bag. In my bag, I've got. Some Bosch impact rated. Uh, they're, I, got, I got them as masonry bits, but they're technically uh, multi purpose bits right here. I'm supposed to do like, you know, concrete, steel, wood, PVC, um, multiple types of metal, I guess, brick, mortar, whatever. It says it's metal tough. Uh, bottom for masonry bits. Some extra Lenox gold blades. Um, <clears throat> speed bore bit, and then I got an auger bit, and I got some unibits, there's another paddle bit, go right in there, some German bit, bunch of titanium bits, I don't fucking know what I got all in here, more unibits, I need to get myself one of those really fat unibits. Really big step bit. It's next on the list. So I just kind of all get thrown in there. However it fits. Okay. And yeah, that's it for the outside. Um, now we can kind of really get into this thing. Right here. Closer. Uh, inside this pocket right here, got some crimp sleeves. Use that a lot in for <clears throat> a lot for roughing. Some extra wire nuts I just threw in the bag. I got this little uh, set here of like drywall screws, um, anchors and screws. I got some six uh, 632s and 832s. Um, some extra wire nuts. Um, yeah, you never know when you're gonna need those. Um, Got some Allen wrenches. These are just Pittsburgh ones. We really don't use these all that much with what I do. Um, I just got the short and standards here. Um, I thought when I grabbed these, I grabbed standard and metric, but I guess I just grabbed standard. Oh, well, that's really all we use anyways. Um, got some zip ties in here, some paper, and yeah, it's, that's it for this little front pocket. <clears throat> Throw these back in there. Okay, and then this is all my pliers up here. So I'll start over here with uh, probably one of my most expensive pairs of pliers. This is my Klein Journeyman Series <clears throat> diagonal cutters um, from the J2000 series. Uh, I love these handles more than any other handles I, I've ever had on any tool. Um, it's just really hard for me to spend the money on them. Because <laughs> the standard pair compared to the German series pair is just so much more expensive. But yeah, man, these just feel great in the hands. Um, really, the only thing is, is, I mean, obviously they took a uh, normal linesman plier and then they made it into a diagonal cutter. Uh, the only complaint I really got about these is um, 
you're not really gonna use all this cutting surface, honestly. It's really hard to cut stuff up here. Um, I don't really see the need in the head being that long, except for it's just taking up more space. Um, I would almost prefer to have a longer handle and a shorter cutting surface to get more leverage. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, dude, these things are sweet. I use them to like cut chains when we're hanging like light fixtures and stuff like that. They'll just chop right through it like it's nothing. So these things are definitely a lot more uh, beefy than these diagonal cutters. Uh, you got a lot more leverage. I mean, if you look at the length there, I mean, it's very substantial. Um, and I guess supposedly these are supposed to be more heavy duty, but the induction harden all their cutting edges. So I don't see how this is gonna be per se more durable. Um, one thing I did notice is the side of this is like, uh, that got worn off really, really quick. I hardly ever use these things, but oh well. I mean, it's, it's a fucking tool. <clears throat> uh, the only south wire tool you'll see in this entire bag, cable cutters. Uh, I had a Lowe's gift card, so that's what I bought. Um, honestly, I haven't really found a situation where I really needed these. I thought, you know, with the SERs that we would run for the panels and stuff or the ranges, I would use these to cut the cable and my wire strippers or diagonal cutters just cut them just fine. Really no effort in those, so I don't I don't see the need to carry these darn heavy fucking things around everywhere. I mean, I'm sure they'll come in handy for something eventually, but I haven't had that choice yet. I mean, yeah, I will say, they are a little bit easier than cutting it with those other two tools. Is it worth carrying these big heavy things? I hardly ever do big wire anyways, so. <coughs> um, sorry guys, I got a cough. Um, next here is just my uh, Kleins, you know, my journeyman uh, linesman's pliers. And everyone likes to call them Kleins. This is what Kleins is known for. It's kind of like calling, uh, you know, a um, tongue and groove plier a, a, a channel lock. <laughs> it's a brand, but um, yeah, these things are nice. And a little bit of hammering marks on them there, you know, because these things are great hammers. <laughs> uh, honestly, and most of the work I do is residential. I don't really use these things that much, but every now and again, I do do some uh, 01 work and some commercial work or um, not, not really any industrial work, but you know, these things do come in handy sometimes. So it's nice to have a pair. Um, these things are brand spanking new, never even seen a single crimp on them yet. Um, I just had, probably about 350 plus dollars of my tools stolen recently. Um, and I went out and had to go buy a whole bunch of new stuff. So I did have the Draymond series ones before this that had this style handle on there. Um, it was like 12 more dollars or something like that compared to this model. So I just decided to go with these. These were, I think like 20, uh, upper 20s, lower 30s in price. And the other one was like 40 something dollars. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just gonna go with these. I don't use them that often. When I do use them, I use them a lot. Um, but they, for the most part, they just sit in the bag until I do use them and they get some good use. Um, and like what you just saw here, diagonal cutters with the angled head. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting the angled head ones. Um, Cause not only do you have uh, the diagonal cutting there so you can get, you know, away from your surface and grab a staple and pull, but you've got your whole hand even further away too. So you can go up next to a stud, grab the staple and pull it. I use these things for pulling staples more than anything else. Um, it's basically all I really care for. It's still nice to have them to like cut other things. They can cut fine wire and they can, you know, definitely cut some heavier things. Um, as you can see, these things have gotten quite a bit of use to them. Um, probably one of my most used tools. Um, I always have these on me, especially on rough in. Um, super, super nice to have. I would never get another pair that doesn't have the angled head. So at first I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about that angled head. Once I decided to go with them, I was so glad I did it. 
So that's my thought on those. Um, up next, Klein needle nose pliers. Um, these things, I bought them because I was like, well, shit, I don't got a pair of needle nose. So I'll just, I'll buy them and they'll collect dust in the bag and, you know, better to have them and, you know, not need them than to need them and not have them. So um, I bought them. They sat in the bag for a couple months and I never picked them up. Um, and then one day I was like, oh man, I could use some needle nose. I grabbed them and ever since then they've been my pouch every single day and I use these things for everything. I'm so surprised at how much I was, I, re I didn't realize how much I was struggling using my strippers to do stuff. Um, to pull and pinch and grab and twist and do all these things. And once I, I started carrying these, my life got so much easier. I, I won't put these things down. So literally never thought I would need them and they turned into one of my favorite tools. So that was pretty cool. Um, now we'll flip around to the other side here. Trying to get a good angle. Okay. So over here on this side, I've got one of these cheap little magnet lights with a hook. Um, oh, it's dead. Must have been on in my bag. It's pretty bright. Cheap little thing though. It comes in handy. Um, got a little torch light here. This is a stream light. Yeah, stream light. So they make really good flashlights. That thing's really bright. Got some. Uh, Got a punch down tool puck, um, some ear plugs, some safety glasses, and a headlight. You're kind of getting a theme for this. And some uh, breath mints in there, in case one of my coworkers smells like shit. Um, definitely nice to have some extra ones laying around. Um, over here on the left side, I've got my most used strippers. These are my ideal strippers. They uh, strip uh, two 12 wires and two 14. So making up switches and receptacles goes really quick with this. I can strip two or four wires at a time. If it's 14, if you know how to do it right, you can strip four wires at once. Um, really gets your uh, efficiency up. Um, these things, uh, these things are pretty nice. Uh, I don't use them as much anymore. Um, they do 10 to 12 solid and stranded and 20 to 22. So um, nice to have a small little pair in there. Um, I used to have the large pair for the, um, um, you know, those size wires and that was stolen in my last bag and I didn't buy it. I haven't bought another pair yet, but I still have my low volt pair. Um, this does 20 to 22 and 30 to 32. So really fine strands of wire. Um, this is my multi-purpose wire stripper. It has a bunch of different crimping, a bunch of different bolt shearings. I use this for sharing bolts more than right and crimping more than really anything else. Uh, some weird crimps and stuff like that. Um, and then it does strip wire and have those little needle style noses on there. Um, I honestly really never use those. RG45 and RJ11 crimping tool. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of low bolts, so I just kind of sit in there too. Collect dust. Nice to have it though. And way over here on the side pocket, right over here, I've got another plier. <laughs> it doesn't fit over there and it does stripping, so I decided to throw it over here at the strippers. Um, it's got a almost like a linesman style head on it. These are the Klein um, multi-purpose pliers. Um, they've got the, the almost linesman style head. It strips um, 10, 12, and 14. Um, it's got a side cutter on it bolt shear for six and eight 32 screws and a crimper on the back and fish tape pulling so um, definitely some really nice pliers they come with the journeyman series handles i used to have most of my stuff in journeyman series and uh, kind of going back to the rubber dipped style those things are super nice i love those pliers these things come in handy once again one of my favorite pairs of tools i have i use these a shit ton um now it's time to get into the guts of the whole thing. Kind of start right here, I guess. So over here, I've got my Milwaukee 12 volt. 
Um, I do have the 18 and uh, um, well, a bunch of the 18 stuff. I've got 18 impact, fuel impact and um, hammer drill. And I've got the angle grinder and Sawzall and, and just a bunch of shit. I don't carry those in my bag though. Um, this is for something that I can grab, take it to someone's house and have everything that I'm gonna need. Um, but this is my fuel impact. It's got the four amp hour battery on it. I usually have it with the two amp hour, so it's really small and compact. Um, it's on the charger at the moment though. So um, got that Milwaukee uh, bit holder and bit. Super nice, love that thing. Um, same with this um, hammer drill. Hammer drill is super nice. Um, able to get even some huge holes done with this thing. So um, definitely no lack of power there. It does everything I need it to. Um, and then we'll go deep. Fawn hammer. Basically the same thing as a Klein, except for it's got a way longer handle to it. Um, you know, it's basically the neck here that's longer fiberglass. Um, same rubber handle as the Klein, same head style as the Klein. I swear they probably, one of the people makes, makes a hammer for the other person because my coworker has one that's identical to this, but this is a Vaughn. It is a Klein, so. I don't know. Great hammer, though. Um, then back here in this pocket over here, I've got my Craftsman Stud Finder. I never use this thing. Nice to have, though, in case you do need it. I'm saying that a lot. <laughs> nice to have it in case you need it. Might want to lighten this thing up. Um, of course, a little plug-in checker. Let's you know if shit's fucked up or not. I find a lot of fucked up shit. <laughs> uh, basic, basic little Klein multimeter. Haven't stepped up and got that fluke one yet. I don't do a whole lot of, uh, you know, testing. So it does what I need it to do for now. So um, I guess that's really all I need. Got the probes down there. Um, Klein. Torpedo level has the conduit bending screw on it. Uh, you can do, you know, flat zero degrees, 90, 45, and 30 with uh, four rare earth, uh, I think they call them neodymium magnets, or I'm not sure, rare earth magnets. And yeah, this thing definitely sticks to shit, man. It is uh, definitely really nice. Same with this uh, Milwaukee tape measure. Before I did have the Klein, um, decided to go with the Milwaukee. Um, I love the little edges it's got here on the side. Um, right underneath, you got the finger stop. I love that. And it's also got a really strong magnet to it. So, um, and some more shit I never use, like some architectural bullshit. Um, really nice tape measure though, I love it. Um, I would not go back to the Klein. I love this Milwaukee. I've had Klein. I have a Stanley Flat Max I use for my carpentry work in my garage. Um, used that for years. Loved it. Used it as an electrician for a bit. Between all those, I like the Milwaukee the best, if you want to know my opinion. Um, and that's my opinion. Some people are going to say, oh, I've used a Stanley for this many years. Or Klein's a tradesman's thing. Well, okay, whatever, dude. Like, I can think what I want to think. I've used all of them. I like that one the best. Um, this is my little Aki bit set. Got a whole bunch of those extra silver Phillips bits. Um, you know, in case I lose them and shit. Um, just a nice little set to have. And then I got this Harbor Freight Bauer case that holds my random bits in here. Lots of racketeers in there. These are basically just bits I, I give out if people need something to use. So I don't like to give away my good shit. Um, then right here, Klein pipe reamer. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of conduit. I haven't done a whole lot of conduit. I would like to do more. I've used this thing like five or six times. I've had it for a year and a half, so. I am only a second year apprentice. Um, this is a Klein 11 in one. Broke out the back. Boss told me, oh, I'll just use that to hammer it out. Well, that was a bad idea. Never listening to him again. 
<laughs> uh, standard Klein without a broken back. I wouldn't buy another one. Um, I just kind of use that one as parts in case I lose any of these tips or anything. Um, and right next to that, stubby multi-bit. This is a six in one. Um, what's kind of weird to me is it's got two different size nut drivers on there, so they gotta make one bit a larger bit. So if I lose that one, ain't no replacing that. This one I can, you know, scavenge off the other one, but yeah, nice. This thing's got me out of some pinches. This thing's definitely really nice to have. And those uh, comfort grips on there, they're super, uh, super rubbery, I guess is, I don't really know the word to say. And it's uh, unlike these ideal ones, which is a little more plasticky, you can get a lot better grip on those. And with that small one specifically, it's super nice to have. Some of these bigger screwdrivers, it's not that big of a deal to have this type of a handle, at least to me. Um, but it is definitely a lot more of a comforting thing. Um, then I just got a Keystone flat blade with a wire bender on there. It's kind of turned into my beater. Had a beater, it was stolen. So that kind of got demoted. Um, Phillips, standard Phillips bit. A lot of my coworkers only use an 11 one for all their screwdrivers and I don't really see how, I mean, there's so many times you need the fine precision of a small shaft to get behind things. Um, or, you know, the screw is recessed into a hole really, really deep. And I don't see how you're going to get into that with an 11 and one. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, this is an ideal insulated flat blade or keystone screwdriver. Um, thousand volt VDE insulated. And then I've got the Phillips match it things uh all these screwdrivers i've mentioned um hold screws with such precision um i wasn't expecting that much of i uh, out of ideal i know they make a decent product i've used their strippers and a couple other tools like their wire benders and stuff or not their wire benders their conduit benders excuse me um and you know i, I know they have a good product but i wasn't expecting their screwdrivers to have as good a precision as the Klein ones do when holding screws. And those ones actually surprise me. All the screwdrivers I have here um, just fit perfectly um, when it comes to most screws. So it's like almost like it's magnetic, but it's not. It's awesome. Um, before we get down to this section, I'll kind of jump back here. Um, I've got a 7 16 extension from Milwaukee. Um, and then I got some quarter inch quick lock one some off brand and then i got my other beater screwdriver this is a um i'm not even sure what brand this is i got this at a yard sale and it was rusted all the way down the shaft and this had paint all over it and chips all over it and i sanded down the handle and put a lacquer coat over it and wire brushed the whole shaft and um it's, it says it's fully hardened on there i don't know if you can read that fully hardened and yeah, this thing's got a metal striking cap, metal all the way through the shaft. This thing is really nice for fucking shit up. <laughs> um, Klein keyhole saw, Shirok knife, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, sorry if you don't like my fucking cussing. Um, this thing, Klein, adjustable length screwdriver. It's got a uh, flat blade up here, and then you can adjust it all the way out until you see these lines and it holds it in there. See, I have a really long shank on there, which is nice. Um, they ha sell different shanks too that have uh, different tips on them and you can flip it where it pops all the way around to the other side and you got you know, your Phillips right there. So definitely, um, definitely really nice to have. Um, I use these things a lot for panels and stuff. Um, once again, most of my coworkers just use 11 in ones and I see them struggling all the time. Um, twirly. Man, these things make it so much easier, so much more efficient to put in, uh, lots of screws and wall plates and stuff like that. This was actually my grandpa's and it looked like it was never used. My grandpa passed away when I was about, uh, nine years old. Um, and this was sitting in my mom's garage and when I was out there looking for a tool for her one day 
um, right after I became an apprentice. And I saw this sitting there and I was, you know, more familiar with what Klein was. And I was like, a Klein tool on my mom's bench? Like, what is this? And I asked her and she was like, oh, that's your grandpa's. So she let me take it. And this thing has a lot of sentimental value to me. So um, I didn't get a whole lot from my grandpa. Then these, these are Kenipex, um, linesman's pliers, 1,000 volt VD insulated. Um, yes, that's how you say it, Kenipex. I watched a German Kenipex, um, what's the word? Ambassador or whatever, a sales fucking guy, right? Who was selling it, he was talking all goddamn German, worked at fucking Kenipex, and he was talking his German accent and saying Kenipex, Kenipex. So, yes, you can call it Knipex or Nipex, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, I don't give a fuck. Um, I just heard him say Knipex, and he works there, and he's German. So, Knipex is what I'm going to call it. Um, you guys call where the fuck you want. Um, another set of Knipex. Um, these are the... Uh, <laughs> they're not the alligator ones. They're the cobra ones. I was like, fuck, you almost forgot. Yeah, co Cobra pliers, pump pliers, channel locks, or the fuck you want to call them once again. Um, and yeah, these things are fucking sweet. I've only used them a couple times, but I literally just got them last week. So, brand shiny new. Um, I like to adjust them about to there. So the handles come together a little bit more. i throw them right there. Um, right over here, a tool I've literally never used a day in my life. Um, thousand volt insulated Quinn. Don't know what that brand is, where they're made. Um, one of my buddies gave them to me. So just kind of sitting there, um, collecting dust. Nice to know I've got a really skinny pair of needle nose though, and they're insulated. It's nice to know. Um, but never used them so no review there craftsman 13 16 wrench crescent wrench um this thing's fucking heavy duty man i haven't used that very much either double-ended um closing wrench made in the usa by craftsman it's a 11 what is it 11 sixteenths and a seven eighths. Uh, it's not one of the cool ones where it's double sided. Anyways, I got this recently as well too. Bought it, thought it'd come in handy. Used it twice already. Threw it in the bag. I haven't touched it since. Um, this thing, fucking love this. This is a Klein adjustable wrench. Um, this thing's gotten some use already, and I just got this maybe a month, about a month ago. Um, really useful tool. Never know when you come across something that you might need to fuck up, right? This is a crazy sucker right here. My coworker made this for me. Welded uh, some washers and spacers together. Hammer on that side. Um, got a long threaded bolt here. Put some... Uh, pipe tape <laughs> all over it and then um, two nuts that he tightened together in the end and your uh, nail sits right in there perfectly and you can hammer on it and nail in a box. Um, you would usually want to use this when a box is like between two studs and you don't have a whole lot of room to swing your hammer in there and you know bang the shit on it bang the shit out of it on this thing so it's pretty fucking nice and genius tool actually. Um, Wire nut spinner fucking saves my goddamn hands sometimes, especially when a wire's like it's roto zipped or fucked up and it's really, or those fucking people that did electrical, you know, back in the 50s and shit. Granted, some of them had really good craftsmanship, but dude, some, some of the shit that we have to redo is, is fucked up. And the wires are so fucked up or they're so short back in the box trying to get your hands back there behind everything, um, you know, tighten down fucking wire nut um especially you know if there's three wire three 12 wires back there and you know you're having to do a, a pigtail off of it fucking way easier to just fucking throw a wire nut in here 
throw it in your impact, spin it up. This thing is coming handy a lot. Um, and then a little tack driver here. This is a multi-bit one. So it pops out there. Got your bits here. Flip it around. Two other sizes of Phillips and flat. And it's got the little spinny deal on the back so it can sit in your palm. You can just spin it like that. It's pretty fucking nice. Came free in some pack I bought. And then over here I just got some Inksol, big Sharpies, small Sharpies, pens and pencils. And yeah, dude, that's about my entire bag. Everything I've got. Um, definitely a couple other tools I want to buy here soon. Um, can't really think of them off the top of my head, but um, if there's really anything major in here you think I'm missing, um, I am still, like I said, second year electrical apprentice. Um, I'm doing residential work right now, um, and then I'm kind of um, just going to journeyman out at my residential O2. Um, that, I really love doing that kind of work. Still kind of up in the air if I want to go for my O1 commercial. Um, it does seem pretty interesting. Um, but, you know, the five years thing is kind of, you know, up in the air with me. So, uh, but, you know, I love doing residential work. Um, and, you know, if you guys see anything else that you use on an everyday basis, you think is just absolutely essential, um, leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you think I'm missing. Um, one thing I do want to get, though, a pair of good Romex strippers I can actually use. And these things are basically just a novelty item. I like to lug around with me for some reason. Um, yeah, a little short story about these though. I went to a, a customer's house and while I was working there, they had some guys chopping down a tree in their backyard. These were stuck in the tree and grew up 35 feet in the air and it was lodged all the way down to here in the tree. So the tree grew around it and grew up. And he said that that tree was, he's lived in that house for, you know, 40 something years as an older gentleman. And yeah, these was, were probably maybe even his um, or someone that was, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he, he remembers that tree being a small tree one day and he kind of told me some story I honestly can't really remember. I don't think I was listening too well. But yeah, they grew up in this fucking tree and they cut, cut it down. It was covered in rust, had sap all over it. The handles were all chewed up and they still cut. Um, they still stripped uh, with the 12 wire, the 14 wire, not so much. Um, and... Um, yeah, until one day someone turned a circuit on me while I was using them to cut, and I blew a fucking hole in them after a week of having them. Fucking blew these goddamn things up. So after that, I just kind of retired them to the bag, and yeah. Sorry to make that exit so long there. I just want to share that little story with you. I thought it was crazy how these grew up in that tree, but anyways, if you guys have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching my video, and you guys all take it easy and be safe. Thanks.